In this video, we're going to talk about the Major League Fishing BPT Stage 1. We will talk about the Bassmaster Opens on Lake Okeechobee. We'll talk about MPFL on Logan Martin. And lastly, we'll talk about the anglers who are outside of that cut line for the top 60, 65 for the Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour. If you like this kind of content, click that like and subscribe button. And I appreciate you guys watching. So first, I'm going to mispronounce a lot of names. I'm going to try to do my best, but I apologize. I'm not... I'm not perfect. Nobody is. I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. Next, I didn't get to watch as much fishing as I wanted to this past weekend because Thomas had a swim meet. That's my little boy. And that comes before watching YouTube and all the other crap that I watch. But I did get to watch a fair amount of the early stages of the BPT and some of the stuff of NPFL. Major League Fishing and the Bass Pro Tour were on Toledo Bend this past weekend. And day one of both day of group A and B was a complete disappointment and something that pissed off every angler that loves watching bass fishing because there was no coverage. Now I understand Major League Fishing is trying to save some money and I think next year when they go to another different format on the amount of days they probably will have all the days covered but for this year I think we're SOL. I think day one group A and B is not going to be broadcast and I think it just comes down to saving money. Is it a disappointment? For sure. Did it piss me off? Yes. It's hard to just go on there and just watch the score tracker and see updates. If you want to watch the score tracker, you might as well go outside and watch grass grow. It's just absolutely boring. Is it a mistake on Major League Fishing's part? Yes. Were the fans and anglers and other people probably disappointed? For sure. But they got back to it on day two and we got coverage where Jacob Wheeler and Group A won his event and Dustin Connell won his group on group B. They're back to every fish counts. Last year they were top biggest five. This year every fish counts and it is it keeps the pace of the broadcast going. It's always non-stop because they've had camera people in a lot of boats. You're constantly seeing fish being caught and that's what I think most people enjoy. Now do we want to see giants caught? For sure. But it gets really hard to watch when there's lulls during the day and you have 10 angle, 10 guys and 10 cameramen that just aren't doing well. So the constant moving of camera boat to camera boat that we get to see helps make the broadcast a lot more interesting. And I do understand that people want the five fish. But right now, I'll be honest, I enjoy every fish because it's a lot more fish catching. And that's really what I want to see. Having said that, I don't want to see a bunch of guys get on a school of fish and just beat them to death. I do want to see bigger fish. I think there should be some sort of reward for catching a giant fish, but that's not how Major League Fishing is doing it at this point. So we can get off that. And if you're not a fan of forward-facing sonar, you were not a fan of watching Major League Fishing this this past weekend on Toledo Bend. It was absolute domination by forward-facing sonar anglers. If you weren't using forward-facing sonar to catch fish, you probably finished out of the top 40. I think Mark Davis did the best not using forward-facing sonar that much. He was using a rattle trap and found a school of fish. But Dustin, Jacob, all the guys who were in the top 25 were forward-facing sonar dominant. Forward-facing sonar dominated everything about this first stage. Like I said, if you weren't using it, you were not in the top 25. And that's how the year is going to be. And we just have to get over it. As much as I don't like it, it does help anglers catch fish, which is what we want to see as fans. As conservationists, that's not what we want to see. But for now, we have to get over it, grow some balls, accept the change, and just admit defeats at some point in time. Forward-facing sonar is here. It's going to be here for a long, long time. And congratulations to Justin Connell, who won the first event. Now, I have to be honest. We have to start talking about a few anglers in that Jacob Wheeler sentence, and Dustin is one of them. Dustin's won five events for Major League Fishing BPT in his career over the last three or four years, and he is absolutely dominating. He is always fishing well. He should be in the sentence with Jacob Wheeler, and so should Matt Becker, because Matt Becker winning Rookie of the Year and Angler of the Year last year, it wasn't a fluke. He came out this on this tournament and showed that he is as good as any angler out there. Now, I don't know Matt, and I don't know Dustin. I tried to have an interview with Dustin, and he blew me off. But both those guys are absolutely killing Major League Fishing and Bass Pro Tour. But congratulations to Dustin on his fifth, fifth win and collecting that big check. So congratulations, Dustin. On to the Bassmaster Opens, where it was one thing and one thing only. Scott 
Martin. Scott has been on the elites ever since FLW closed in BPT, bought them out. He moved over to the elites, qualified, and hasn't been as dominating as he was when he was with FLW and winning a lot of tournaments. He's kind of been in that 30 to 50 range. Not great, but not the worst of the worst. But what he did on Lake Okeechobee was phenomenal. He won wire to wire. He beat second place by probably 21 plus pounds. He caught big fish. He caught little fish. He caught every fish. And forward facing sonar played another huge part there, which I'm very surprised about because if you know Florida fishing, we live in bathtubs. And forward facing sonar, while you can use it, it's a little bit tougher to use. But Scott Martin has it dialed in. Found a big fish, caught the male, and worked that female for close to, I think, an hour, and it was nine pounds. Pounds, and he just beat them up, beat up the big fish. Caught him on a bandito bug, supposedly, and he just was unbelievable and got his first bid to a classic, something that he has called unfinished business for years in his videos. He has now got a 2025 classic bid, which is what he wanted, what he strived to get. So I say congratulations to him. And that was an absolutely mind-boggling, dominating performance on Lake Okeechobee. And it wasn't surprising, to be honest. I felt like the guys who were locals would do exceptionally well because I said I didn't even know Scott Martin was going to fish the Open. I thought Randall Tharp was going to fish it because he's trying to requalify for leads. He came in third. And the guys that fish Okeechobee know what those fish are doing at all times. And Scott and Randall were exceptional. So congratulations to both. And I'm going to say it right now. Randall Tharp gets into the leads after one year. I think Randall has fire in him. And Randall is a great angler. I've talked to him way a lot of times. Just a really hardworking good dude. So I can't wait to see him back in the elites. Next, NPFL was at Logan Martin. And not the best place to go for the, their first tournament. Not a big amount of weight fish caught. But they also didn't broadcast on day one. I think that's also another thing that they should do. But... I know it's it's about the money. I will say they did have cameras out there for certain anglers, and I have no clue what anglers were using what cameras. Because if you watch Dave Fritz, David Fritz out there, it looked like he was doing the breast cancer awareness on his filter for his camera, and it was pink. It was horrible to watch. And the other anglers were, it was tough. Day one on MPFL to watch the anglers one by one was a little rough, because you want to have someone telling you what's going on. Because when the anglers aren't talking to the camera, camera, it's flat out boring. Day two, they rebroadcast with Fat Cat and Luke and it got a little bit better. But uh, when you start looking at the production quality from the MPFL to Major League Fishing and the Opens, there's such a drastic difference between them that it does have an effect on why and if you're going to watch. While I think that the MPFL is trying to do their best and and, and is doing their best, the quality just doesn't seem to be there. And I'm not sure if anybody's watching on their fixed TV. I know I went back and watched it today, a little bit today, to see how it looked and if it was better. And it was better on the day they were broadcasting, but it wasn't it wasn't Major League Fishing quality. And Will Harkins won the event with 47.9, and that was great. Kyle Welcher came in seventh, made himself $12,500. David Fritz came in 19th for $9,200. And Zach Burge, who was on the BPT, made the right decision and fished well up there on Toledo Bend because he finished fifth and made $30,000. So he would have had to come in first place to make that amount of money because second place on MPFL pays 20 grand. Is the MPFL, how did the MPFL do? I mean, it's their first tournament and going against the Opens and Scott Martin crushing them and Toledo Bend and seeing going against Dustin and Jacob and all those other guys, it probably was a tough weekend for MPFL, but they have like two and a half or three or four months before their next tournament so they can figure things out and make things even better. Hopefully they start putting things on YouTube and clips so we can start start seeing what's going on because right now it just is there's nothing to show or promote or tell what's going on and I, I hate that. And lastly, we're going to talk about who's in and who's out with Major League Fishing BPT. Now, I'm looking at the anglers outside of the top 60. And some of these anglers don't have the right amount of points because, like Jacob Wheeler, has five or six seasons. And when I put the average over that five or six seasons and you have one tournament and just one year, your average doesn't work out. And to use an example, I think there's one Nick LeBrun, Nick LeBrun, however you say his name, finished with 284 points last year and he had... 50 points in this final this tournament this weekend which gives him an average of 334 if i divide that by 2 years that gives him 167 don't quote me on those numbers and i'm not a mathematician but if you average out his 
his thing having 167 points doesn't make him have enough points to qualify. But again, he has a whole season to make up for 2024. So guys who have one year, I'm not really going to talk about. I'm hoping that they have a good year this year and can do it. But like Nick and some other guys, Matt Becker and those guys, when you average out this year and last year, the points, it just doesn't work out. The guys I'm going to talk about are the guys that have several years. I also haven't taken off one year for that three years, if, and that makes no sense. You're allowed to discard your, your worst year of three. And most anglers are probably going to discard the 20. 20 season when we had COVID. And the reason for that is the points are drastically lower that year than any other year. So I have not removed their worst year because their worst year could be this year. But these are the anglers that I think are outside that top 60 because they're only take 65 looking in and they need to start having some really solid tournament finish sh finishes or else they're not going to make it in next year for 2025. Those anglers include Boyd Duckett, Cliff Crochet, Shea, even though he had a good one this past weekend. Kelly Jordan, John Murray, which I think might retire. James Citywide Watson, David Walker, Gary Klein, Dean Rojas, Britt Myers, Matt Lee, Brandon Coulter, Marty Robinson, and Randy Howell. And like I said, I tried to use an average. And when I looked at the last five years of BPT and the points that average out to the average 60 play, 60th place finish is about 210 points. So you need to have that many points to kind of boost yourself to make sure you're in that top 60. So some of the rookies or some of the new guys, that's the points, the point level that they should be really focusing on. Because if you can get in that 215, 245, you're pretty safe to make that top 60. But those anglers right there are not in that 220-ish range to 15 range. They are well outside of it. So they need to propel themselves and have some really quality tournament finishes the rest of the season or else they will be out. And we're going to look at this every tournament because I think as the tournaments go on, it's going to even bring more drama into what's happening. I think this year it's not really horrible, but I think next year getting to that 30, 35 is really a drastic drop. This year, 60, 65 is, or 60, 55, it, it, it'll be tough. It's going to be tough for a lot of those anglers. And if you've had a bad tournament, the stage one, that does not help you. You need to get that average up. But there's anglers like Becker and some of the rookies from last year. And we're not even, to be honest, we're not even giving credit for how good Becker is. He is phenomenal. Um, but right now his average is in the middle. He makes it with, I think, without any problems. But, be, but it's because you take one tournament and a whole season, it just doesn't it doesn't mesh. So there are some statistical flaws in the whole thing, but I'm trying my best and I hope to give you the best information that I can. So, so do me a favor, comment below and tell me what you think. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. I will talk to you very, very soon. Thank you and cheers.